Okay, so we have, or you have presumably finished up the Mod Zero program, and now you're doing the backend capstone. So uh, there's some environment setup stuff that we'll have to work through, so let's do that. Um, so we can get there, I don't know how you how you got the link, but you can get there from the modzero.turing.io. Backend capstone, scroll down to the bottom, and it says click here to get started with the technical capstone. So that drops you into this GitHub repo at the top of the page. Um, we have this backend mod zero capstone repository and then this environment setup piece. Um, so we're gonna work through this. So I made the like environment setup video a few minutes ago. So this is still kind of like a bare machine. It's not connected to GitHub. Um, there's no SSH keys. There's no terminal access for Atom. Um, so we're gonna do all of that. All right, so now onto RBEN, stands for Ruby Environment. Um, there's many, many, many versions of Ruby. You'll, for Turing, you'll have to use probably a handful of different versions, and then once you're working, you might be using many more. So the default version of Ruby that's installed on your computer is not sufficient. So, like this says, similar to Homebrew, Homebrew RBEN does everything we need. So open up the terminal. Um, we're going to do brew update. Just make sure Homebrew is all up to date with everything that it needs. And are you up to date? Great. Um, so brew install rbenv. So brew install rbenv. Okay, look like it worked. Okay, so we're gonna ignore the rest of this. So we've got rbenv install rbenv. Let's open up rbenv. Uh, to see what it says about itself. Curiosity is a phenomenal thing, so if you're like, oh, I wonder what this thing does, or what does that program do? Um, always open it up, take a look. Works, installation, homebrew, this is what we just did. Brew install rbenv, um, and then set up rbenv in the shell. So rbenv init, rbenv init. Did a thing and it said load rbenv automatically by appending the following to your bash profile. So that is kind of Greek. Mysterious, right? Let's see what Ian's instructions said. It said the output in your terminal will be something similar to, sure enough, that's exactly what it was. So uh, the, your bash underscore profile um, is just something that manages your terminal, this thing. So I've got the command line tools installed on Atom now. So we can do Atom tilde. Tilde is your root folder. So if you do like, you know how you can do like ls and that shows you whatever is in your current file. You can do ls tilde and it'll show everything that's in your, kind of in your root directory. So these should all be familiar files. If you do um, ls-a tilde, that's gonna show all of your files, even the hidden ones. And a hidden file is not fancy. It's just a file name that begins with a dot. So now we can see all of these files that begin with a dot here. Um, same directory, just normally you wouldn't see them. And one of them happens to be bash profile. So we wanna open up this file in Atom. So we can do Atom tilde dot, bash underscore profile, hit tab, hit enter, and that opens up our bash profile. And then per these instructions for here, eval this, uh, we're just gonna copy it into the very bottom. Um, we'll hit save. You probably won't have this in your bash profile. Don't worry about it. As long as this line is in there, you'll be good to go. We saved it, hit command S, so it's saved, and now um, we have to tell our terminal to like resource that file. When you open up a, the terminal, it looks at your bash profile and then doesn't look at it again. Um, so you can either quit the terminal and open up a new one and that would source it, or we could just source um, tilde dot, uh, slash dot bash profile. Nothing, there's nothing obviously different, um, but now we can do that our Ben worked per the instructions here. Um, oh, okay, so. Ian suggested closing the terminal and reopening it. Um, so you can close it and reopen it, or you can do source bash profile. And then we can do rbenv versions. And it's just that. It says system set up by rbenv version. So, um, but it's working. Oh, rbenv. Um, just do rbenv and enter. We get all that stuff. Super cool. All right, so now we have to install Ruby. We are almost through the thick of this. Um, all right, so we're gonna use Ruby 2.4.1. Um, like I said, 
you'll be using lots of different versions, but we'll just run with this one. Like over time, lots of different versions of Ruby. So we'll do rbenv install, which you'll see is one of the command flags we can pass to rbenv. rbenv install 2.4.1. So it's going to install Ruby 2.4.1, um, and it's going to take a while. So we wait. Okay, so installing Ruby 2.4.1 finished. It said installing Ruby 2.4.1, and then like feels like 10 or 15 minutes elapsed, and then it said installed Ruby 2.4.1. Um, last time I did this, for some reason, I think it just printed out like a billion lines of text as it installed, and then this time it didn't. So I don't know why. Maybe yours installed or printed out a bunch of text. Maybe it didn't. But now we can verify uh, that it worked. So we can do rbin versions, um, and it shows the system uh, and the 2.4.1, which we just installed. So we can um, see which version of Ruby we're using by typing which Ruby. Um, and the result is it's going to print the file path to the version of Ruby that we're using. So right now we're using uh, the Ruby that is in user slash bin. Um, that's the default installed version of Ruby uh, that comes on your laptop, and that's not what we want to be using. So we're going to change um, the Arbin version. Uh, so we're going to say, uh, let's see. Oh, we could also do Arbin version, and it'll show the current one, so system. Uh, so we'll change um, to 241, so we can do rbenv local 2.4.1, and now when we do rbenv version, uh, our, sorry, not rbenv, rbenv version says 241, and when we do rbenv versions, um, see it still says system and 241, but now the asterisk has moved down to the 2.4.1. So the asterisk is next to whatever version um, you're using. Um, so now if we do which Ruby, uh, interesting, it still says user bin Ruby, and I think that's because we changed it locally and not globally. Um, so if we do, I guess, Ruby-V, it says 237, so that's the old one. Okay, so Arben ver, uh, use local 241 didn't really do what I expected it to do. Um, so we're just going to set it to the default version. We don't ever need to go back and use the version of Ruby that came installed on our machine. So we want global usage to be 2.4.1. So we'll do Arben global 2.4.1. Now I'm predicting when we do Arbem version, it's going to be 241. Arbem version 241, which Ruby should come back. Why is that? Hmm. I'm going to do gem. OK, so the main reason we need to install different versions of Ruby is so we can install gems and whatnot. So I'm going to do gem install pry. You're welcome to do that. At, oh, wait. Uh, make your terminal aware of the updates. Whew, I'm struggling. Uh, okay, so once you set the global Ruby version, make the terminal aware of this update with rbin rehash. Let's try that before we go too far down the path. rbin rehash. Now which Ruby might return? Dang it. We're going to try, all right, so gem install uh, pry. Okay, permission error. So it still thinks I'm using our default version of Ruby, but if I do rbin versions, it says 241, so rbin dash dash help. Uh, let's see, so global Ruby version. That's what I want. Let's try rbin which Ruby. Which Ruby, rbin which Ruby knows. So this is what I wanted to see, um, that in the dot rbin version, I'm sorry, dot rbin uh, directory, um, we have Ruby 241. So when rbin goes and grabs Ruby, it gets it from here. So why did... Oh, I... Let's see, let's check. 
I may have, uh, I may need to add that. Yep, okay. So, uh, I'm on my wife's laptop. I had run through all the environment setup stuff, recorded the whole video, and then ended the recording, deleted all the stuff from our machine, and moved the video to my laptop and uploaded it. That's the portion that you just watched. But in the process of cleaning everything off of her machine, when I re-added it to finish this video, I missed this step. So, easy. We'll just source bash profile. Um, so now, which Ruby should catch up? Okay, yeah. So the problem was, uh, it's complex, but your shell has like this list of places that it goes to look for how to execute commands. Um, and because we had not placed this here, rbenv didn't know to initialize itself because rbenv overwrites the Ruby command. So when I type which Ruby without this sourcing rbenv here, rbenv wasn't like grabbing the command and doing the thing it needed to do, um, so, which is why the default version of Ruby kept coming back. But once we added this and sourced the shell, now rbenv, when it sees Ruby-related commands go by, like grabs the command and um, intercepts it and gives us the functionality that we want. So uh, which Ruby gives us rbenv directory? We do rbenv versions, system 241, rbenv version um, 241. And now we can do gem install pry, and it'll let us, because it's not the default installed gem on the computer. I'm sorry, it's not the default version of Ruby on the computer, which computer tries really hard to keep you from like messing with, as it should. You shouldn't be messing with the default version of Ruby. So, uh, installed pry, and now you can do something, you've probably in the past done IRB. Um, we can do like puts hello, and it does that. Um, so I'm gonna hit control C or control D to get out of that. Um, but now we can also do pry, and we get into a pry session. So we can do puts hello, and it does that. Pry gives you nice color, it seems super trivial, but colorization, so if you're like def cool method args, wp args end, um, now we've got like that syntax highlighting and you can call it with cool method turing school, and now it's that. That's it, you now have rbenv installed and you're able to interact with different versions of Ruby on your laptop.